My name is Brandon Bishop, and just like you, I love food. It has always been my dream to travel this nation and abroad, discovering the very best each city has to offer. And that's exactly what I do. So with the magical snap of my fingers, I'm going to go there, eat that. When I first heard of the cities of Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, to be honest, I had visions of the Beverly Hillbillies, people in overalls playing banjos on the porches of old barns as chickens roam free and moonshine flows. And I'm sure at one point, this was all pretty accurate, but not anymore. So in Gatlinburg and in Pigeon Forge, this is what they call the off season because it's cold outside right now. But I didn't want to be here when it's completely packed out. I wanted to be here when the snowmen are hanging out. You got a drummer? You got a drummer? Oh, I'm the drummer. These cities just 10 minutes apart from each other are surrounded by the majestic Smoky Mountains. They remind me more of a smaller, less annoying Las Vegas or Orlando without all the corporate monochromaticisms. It's a small town with big family fun, and it's freaking cool. I can't really think of a better way to kick off my stay here in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge than to capture a bird's eye view from 400 feet over the city. The Gatlinburg Space Needle rises out of the stacked arcade that my kid would never want to leave. But there's a whole lot of that whole stuffing food in my face thing that I have to get to, so I'll only be a big kid just long enough to earn a few tickets and maybe win a massive prize, and then I'll, and then I'll head up into space. Hey, I will take that George Foreman grill, uh, the coffee machine, maybe that giant Luigi over there. Oh, maybe the PlayStation 4. Uh, looks like we only have enough of this chicken right here. That chicken right there? Yes, sir. What color would you like? Uh, yellow chicken. Okay. So no PlayStation 4s. No, sir, not this time. Well, I will treat it like a major award. Thank you. Yes, sir, you have a great day. So this is like the Willy Wonka elevator. Yeah, it's like a little Is this the up and out button? Or are we gonna crash to it and <laughs> see all of Gatlinburg and Vision Forge? And... It's very possible. Oh, this is pretty. <laughs> have we arrived? We have. Is this where like sporting goods and <laughs> this is all the cool stuff. Oh nice. Oh this is this is outside. Yeah, it's outside oh, outside. It's a really good thing it's not cold out today. Not slide off of the. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Wow, this is beautiful. Out here. Tell me, whose idea was it to stick a giant space needle in the middle of a city like Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Uh -huh. Surrounded by natural beauty and all this fun stuff, and then there's this. I know, it's. It's definitely like a, a landmark. It's been here since uh, 1969, I believe, is the year that opened. Um, Hippies. Hippies did yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> Hippies did this. I know they they did. had a huge parade to celebrate it, and in the 70s, late 70s, um, the family that owns it now bought it. They put the arcade in there and everything else, and really just like brought it to life. So I noticed I had to walk through an arcade to get to the elevator to take us to the top. Yeah. So you guys own that arcade. Yes. And there's a pizza shop next door. And there's the pizza shop. There's also an escape room downstairs that they own. Again, like I, when I first saw all of the city, I'm like, my kid has to come here. He'll want to move here. It's, it's everything he loves. Like in one little pizza arcade. It's, it's me. It's great. So where in either Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge would be good for breakfast? Frizzle chicken. Frizzle chicken? Yes, it is so good. I've heard of frizzle chicken. They have thousands of singing chickens. Yes. And really good breakfast. Yes, breakfast is so good. 
I'm a breakfast person. Well, I guess uh, that's where we're going. You gotta work, otherwise I'm gonna you know, invite you. But we can bring some frizzled chicken and eat it up here later. I think. bought that. It'll be a frozen <laughs> frizzled chicken. Wow, where's the elevator? Yeah. Even though Gatlinburg is just a few blocks long, you could live here for years and not partake in everything this small mountain town has to offer. It's a place where you could spend every dollar that you have and get super fat. While doing it all with a giant smile on your face, the place is fun. But right now it's breakfast time, 10 minutes away in Pigeon Forge. After a brief trip to the Smoky Mountains, Pigeon Forge appears out of nowhere. Beyond all the mini go-kart tracks, pancake houses, and souvenir shops, there's one place that stands out like no other. I totally follow my recommendations. It's Frizzle Chicken. I've heard rumors of not only amazing breakfast dishes at Frizzle Chicken, but hundreds of singing chickens. Yeah, singing chickens. recommendations and this recommendation is a restaurant whose name I want to say over and over again Frizzle Chicken Frizzle Chicken Frizzle Chicken it's here in Pigeon Forge and they have animatronic chickens everywhere that sing to you they're gonna sing to me I'm gonna sing with them and I'm gonna devour some breakfast because I am absolutely starving this is uh one of the, uh, it's, a, it's a theme restaurant, but it's a family thing. It's just, it smells good. And there's animated chickens. Here they go. So Ellen, I am in a place called Pigeon Forge, and this place is like a mecca of entertainment. It's so much fun. Well, so we're really right in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Okay, and it's beautiful. Which is gorgeous. The most visited national park in the country, which a lot of people find out hard to believe. So when you have that many people coming, you have to have a lot of things to do. And they had a, a little bit of flat ground here between the mountains. And they said, what are we going to put in that flat ground there? I know, let's put a 15 different go-kart racing places and, exactly. and thrift shops and, and souvenir shops. Miniature and a, golf, shopping, places to eat. And, and a uh, restaurant that has animatronic chickens everywhere. So you don't just see that everywhere. So I've never seen that. We are actually sitting near probably my favorite uh, chicken in the place, Wingo Star. Wingo Star, yeah. Now, Dolly Park Inn is obviously my very favorite. And Oprah Henfrey is sick today, yeah. so. Yeah, and somebody, and Jimi Hendrix is out on tour. Who knew? Um, it just, I think the funniest part is that. So I got here, and you all were already here, and they started one of their song selections. So uh, yeah, I mean, took what, 20 minutes or so, they just burst out in the they song. Just, and there's like 100 animatronic chickens all right. singing along to and, well, various songs. Well, they pluck along if we're gonna be, if we're gonna be truthful about it. But it, you cannot help but be in a good mood just to watch the chickens sing. I mean, they're just, that, that is one of those things that we're about making memories here in Pigeon Forge for people, no matter what they're doing. And it's one of those things when you get home, whether it's big kids like us or smaller kids going, oh, but remember the chickens that we're singing? <laughs> well, it's I see there's kids fun. all over the place. You can yeah. hear them screeching in the background. And their faces light up when those chickens start singing. They, they sang a song from Frozen, I think. Correct. And it, the kids are just... I know that song, and exactly. it's a chicken sing clucking well, along. Well, and they're clucking, yeah. and it just is, it's just fun. It's great fun for everybody, and, but one of the things that we say, which we're getting ready to experience is, 
people kind of come for the novelty of being in a place where you've heard they have animatronic chickens. But they're going to come back again next time they visit because the food is so good. think of this area what they really should think of is you know with Dollywood here and Dollywood has her name on it you know it's gonna be done well and done to the standards that you come from expect from Dolly Parton and then when you have most visited National Park and the natural beauty uh, we're really proud of our area we do things a little bit differently because we love our mountains and we're proud to live here we kind of carry on the traditions that are here but when you come we want you to feel like family and when you leave we want you to say hey we're gonna go back there because we have fun we, we kind of felt a part of this, so it made it more like a little bit of a home away from home and um, lots of good food. So I know that's something that you're going to want to come back and do for. I already want to come back, just for the chickens. <laughs> just for the chickens. Just for the chickens. <laughs> said hillbilly love the sheriff gave a hand the judge of the court judge stood up and said to please tell him more the sheriff said he when push comes all right chef jason the table is a canvas you are the artist here is the art right people say breakfast isn't like a difficult thing to do but this is art this is absolutely uh breathtaking man and it smells it is, it is it's great it's uh it's got a lot of love and they just kind of play together a little bit and it's about taking the proteins and all the different carbs and kind of making it just kind of flow well, tell me about this i mean you're sure i mean you're a breakfast chef right how long you've been doing this how long is it going to take me to eat all this and oh uh, my gosh well, first of all, first of all this week. is something that I, I cook. Yeah. I'm a very good cook, yeah. but this is something I can't do very well at all. Poach. Poach an egg like that. Yeah. It's perfectly it's done. Art. It's perfectly it's an done. And uh, when oh, yeah. you're cooking for the masses, you got to get it right every time. Right? So, so is it just chaos in the kitchen or? Controlled chaos, I'd call it maybe. <laughs> so we've got, you know, the, the, the bakers and the saute cooks and everybody kind of coming together. But the main ingredient that they all share is love. Lots of love. So this has to go. Ah, uh, drizzle. Yeah. Right, you tell me when, because no, I, no, I, I get crazy. I get crazy with this. I can't. You know, well, I'll put you out of house. Now would be a good time to maybe. Okay. Just okay. Knock it off. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Here's so, a personal question. For, what, what sure. chicken and waffles? It's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> I can't wait to put this in my face immediately. Yeah. Tell me a. Okay. On the download. Sure. Tell me this. Right. Just between you and I. The chickens are awesome for me because I've been oh. here for about an hour. Right. Yeah. You're here every day just about. Yeah. Does it get a little old, the chickens, it's... Uh, you're probably not supposed to say, yeah, the chickens get old. No. But they'll understand because right. you're here right. all the time. Just between you and I. Yeah, so about... <laughs> <laughs> Before we head back to Gatlinburg for lunch, where I'll meet up with a giant of a friend and a giant of a burrito, I figured why not stop at one of the endless theme attractions that line the main strip. 
Beyond the Lens has a giant collapsed building and a massive camera built to lure in the locals and hapless tourists like me. It's a weird drive too, because it's trees and forest and mountains, yeah. and then bam, like bam. I said, like redneck Vegas. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then again, trees and forest, and then bam, Gatlinburg. Mm -hmm. And then trees and forest. forest. <laughs> it's literally, I was driving at night through the trees. We're like, are we safe? Right. You do that banjo, you know that you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple miles away in Gatlinburg, there's a large, handsome man and a larger, 
handsomer burrito waiting for me. Okay, so I tell myself time and time and time again, go to eat that is not one of those silly competitive eating shows that make you fat and die of a heart attack after a season or two. No, it's not that, but of course, I'm here at local burro, which in Spanish I think means donkey crazy or crazy donkey or something like that. And they have a five pound burrito called El Chihuahua. Now, I've never seen a five pound Chihuahua. I'm hoping this isn't made out of a five pound Chihuahua, but either way, everyone around here, all the locals, including a friend who's gonna join me here in a second, says you have to do the El Chihuahua. So Brandon is here to do the El Chihuahua. Will I pass the test? Will I engulf five pounds of a burrito within myself? Probably not, because we still have more to do later. So you know how this whole thing goes. Luke had the contacts for this Cuban-Mexican fusion-style joint in the heart of hillbilly country. While I'm not insanely excited about the thought of a five-pound burrito raising chaos inside of my body, I'd be lying to if I said I wasn't hungry again. I'm always hungry. It's a part of the nonsense I put myself through to entertain you. You're welcome. Luke, why am I looking at the menu? I already know what we're getting. If there's anybody that's gonna be asking questions here, mister, it's gonna be me because you brought me to local borough yeah. okay, so to one eat a chihuahua. When, when you said that you were coming into town and I was seeing it, that was the one thing I thought of. Man, you have to go to local borough, eat a five pound burrito because- You have to eat a five pound well, burrito. You, you, you're a guy that's eaten all across America. Well, you're the Gatlinburg giant. Mm -hmm. So you're standing an impressive seven foot tall. You look you're thinned out though. You're looking thinned great. Out, yeah. Are you doing this thing with me, or is this like I'm, I, I'm on? A, I'm a carnivore, but I'm going to go ahead and break that for a good meal with a good friend, and I'm going to eat the five pound burrito. Now, what you so want? So you're a bad influence on me, but I'm equally uh, equally as bad. Tell me how we met because it's been years and we've only seen each other for like a couple of hours. Well, I, but I, you know, it's kind of sad, but I've seen you more this year than I have my own father. Oh, <laughs> No, uh, I'm on Wrestling with Ghosts with Punk Master B, Vinny Vineyard, one of our good friends. We also have Haunted Graves on the network. Uh, I would think I've also been on an episode of Go There, Eat That from a vegan. You're, you're plastered so. all over. Yeah, but you know, we, we've got a great, we're, we're, we're like-minded people. We're gonna have a good time. Uh, Oh, we're hoping Funkmaster V would show up today, but he's apparently... We're going to get a hold of that prick at some point, yeah, but um, it's, a, it's a great show. We like spooky stuff, and it's really weird that, like, you and I kind of connected across the pond, so to speak. By pond, I mean, like, the country. We're both musicians. Mm -hmm. We're both pro wrestlers or former pro wrestlers. Former pro wrestlers. We're both in that same vein of humanity. We love the same things. We don't like the same things. Both so, love making TV. You're my, you're my brother from another mother. Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe. Well, my mom's black, so. Your mom's black? Well, my mom's uh, never been with a black man, I'm aware of. Oh. Her loss, man. Her loss. Yeah, her loss. I've heard, I've heard good things. I'll be taking care of you today, guys. Awesome. Uh, he's going to order because he knows what's going on, but I've heard it's the thing. What we're going to do is the world, should be world famous, Loco Burro, Kennedy Cotton. Is this inappropriate? Yeah, that's inappropriate. I'll oh, do that. <laughs> it's a burrito. Five, we, want, we want two of the five pound El Chihuahua burrito. That's 10 pounds of burrito, Luke. 10 pounds of burrito. Okay. Said hillbilly love. 
Somebody sounds like they put weight on, like a boom. It's bop, like a bop, ten bop, pound bop, chihuahua bop, coming bop. at us, like cut into two. Oh geez, here he is. Yeah. There's no way we're doing this. You don't think so? Man, I've tried it once. I've already eaten today, but I'm actually pretty hungry. Right, guys, I have faith in me. Oh my goodness. I have no faith in me. That's for both of us? No. <laughs> Look, I'm almost seven foot tall. I'm what? Enjoy, Thank you so much, sir. I try not to cuss on my shows. I'm fully allowed to, but I'm just saying, what the actual F is this? It's a five pound burrito. What do you get when you win? What do you, do? if I eat this whole thing, what happens? I die Where's my fork? Hey guys, I got 30 minutes on the clock. Sorry 30 now. minutes. 30 minutes, that's 30. it. 30. Oh, yes, sir. No that's problem. Like 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I tell you what, have another one of these ready because I'm gonna knock this off quick. Okay. This is maybe I just slide it into my mouth like this. I think the easiest way. I would have a different profession if I could do that. I think the easiest way is to just mix up the the toppings. I, I don't think there is a best way to do this. I think the, it's just the, the problem is is their their smaller burrito, the, the the smaller beef burrito isn't as good as this for some reason. That's good. It is. Oh, it's fantastic. That's, that's the problem. You have to order this big thing to get the best burrito in Tennessee. That is good. It's a little. There's literally everything. Beans, beef. I mean, it's very tomatoey. It's got a good kick to it. Mmm. Got a real good kick to it. Wow. Now here's the thing, I do not, I'm doing this because this looks amazing on that little camera right there. I do not condone this. I do not suggest that you do something like this. It's a great gimmick and they have amazing food here mm -hmm. outside of you know, this giant chihuahua, which is bigger than an actual chihuahua. I don't condone doing this, I'm already feeling the satisfaction of being full, and I've literally, I'm not even a third of the way there yet, so. Yeah, this is dumb, okay? <laughs> it's just what dumb people do, whether you, there's only two reasons to do this. There's only two reasons to do this. You have a TV show, you're trying to show off, or you're just straight up dumb. You're dumb. Yeah. yeah. And we're all three. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to do the food challenge. Here comes the hospital, they know what I'm doing. Yep. No, you passed. But I think they call ahead of time. Like just, we got two people going. We got, we got two idiots. We got two idiots. Yeah, just be on standby. <laughs> Yeah, you did. I need so much carbs, you know. Portion your meals, Brandon. Well, I mean, it, he didn't say what size portions. He's gonna kick me in the dick. Is what's gonna yeah, he's gonna know. He's gonna watch this show. And no, he's not even gonna have to watch oh, okay. the show. He's gonna know. You're gonna go see the doc, and he's gonna be like, "You ate the damn burrito, didn't you?" Gallenberg, huh? Yeah. Five pound burrito. Mm -hmm. I'm done. How are we doing this? Are we just gonna, should we tap out on the rest of the burrito and splash just it everywhere? And just, so I'm with you, brother. It was a good try, though. We, we, we hustled. Welcome to Gatlinburg. 
I think I'm gonna go take a nap now and get Yeah, I said, we just woke up, it's time to take a nap. Gun out. Over. Son of a bitch. I didn't say three pounds of a five pound burrito. That makes it better. If you throw up, that thing is spinning. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna go. It's gonna go. I'm gonna run it. You're gonna run it? Yes. This is how I feel after eating a five pound burrito. Most of the five pound burrito. I have to admit, I love hanging out in the Gat, but it's back to the Forge for a hillbilly take on dinner theater. Jay, these are, this is a dinner feud, right? So I can you, you don't this, throw my food. Oh, that's what it is. But it looks—I was gonna say—it looks way too good to be uh, simple projectiles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is a dinner feud? I know Ellen told me this morning at, at Frizzle Chicken, and we uh, had a nice breakfast together. Good. But it's still not completely clear. I see an awesome stage over there. I see amazing food right here. So dinner. And the Hatfield McCoy's is the feud? It's the feud. The feud is between the Hatfield and the McCoy's. It's been going on for generations. And these are not actors. These are real Hatfields and McCoy's who are actually up there fighting while you're eating and enjoying it, right? Some of the generations. It's like yes. mixed martial arts, right? How much fun is it to be a part of this? To, uh, I'm sure you've seen the show a few times. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been here 17 years, cooking here. Here? Yes. Sir. That's job security. Yes. Sir. Who, do you, who do you root for, the Hatfields or the McCoys? I'm neutral. <laughs> I'm absolutely neutral. Whoever leaves the biggest tip, right? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, how many actors and uh, how, I mean, how, this is a production. Yes. There's a lot of people involved here. Because we got here a little early, we noticed the, the parking lot in the back was back while, yes. while you guys parked. So there's a lot of people involved. Fully sold out. There's 27 performers, 33 servers, and I have 27 people in the kitchen cooking. 27 people in the kitchen. Serving drinks. Mm -hmm. Talk about hurting cats. That's a, <laughs> that's a feud in its own right back there. I yes, imagine sometimes. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got their own secret process. Again, you're not going to tell me, but is it a, is it a slow deep fry? And like a thin? deep fry, and I do a 14 minute deep fry cook on. That's where you keep the, the temperature low. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of bubble over the top a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen that before, and this is this is right up there with the best chicken I've had. So. Mm. 
don't even know what's gonna be happening over there, but this right here is like alone. It's worth the trip, so. Hatfields and McCoys, say hi to Jay. Get yourself some chicken, get yourself some pulled pork. This is pretty fantastic. I haven't tried the soup yet. This is, there seems like a lot of food here, time. but it's like I'm already getting some little stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's all you can eat. If you go home hungry, it's not my fault. This is all you can eat? <laughs> yes, sir. All you can eat. So I can slurp the soup down and then magically, mm -hmm. more sir, soup. Sir, we'll come by and fill it right back up if you want. As if the dinner and the show weren't enough, I get to meet up with a good friend for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Funkmaster V. So, uh, two and a half toot, years. Toot, time to ride the funk train here. He came Hatfield in. Hatfield and McCoy. He man. came in character. I'm fresh off of a five pound burrito, which I mostly got with your buddy Luke. So we're in we're in different time zones right now. Right? Absolutely. I'm, I just woke up. I'm breathing heavy. I'm still ingesting soup. <clears throat> the soup's good, by the way. The soup's really this good. This is made by the soldiers of dead Confederate. Uh, you know, it's the bones of dead Confederate soldiers. They boil them down. Yes, and you knew probably too. They throw them in there. Two and a half years we've been. I consider you one of my better friends. And this is the first time. Basically, this week that I've met you in I've person. Con I consider you one of my stronger acquaintances. <laughs> so I appreciate it. And I'll accept that because oh, I'm more of uh, Oh, we got drinks. Look at this. Bad coat. If it's not in a mason jar, it's not correct around here. It's, <laughs> yeah, and it's good to have Punk Man's to be at a place that celebrates uh, this type of thing here. Because this is the antithesis of what I am. But it is fun. Well, yeah, we're okay. here. We're here. I, I wanted to take you on a nice first date. Thank you. This is the best dating place in the city for Pigeon Forge from what I've seen. <laughs> so it, it, it's theater, it's a coliseum, it's it, it's food, it's it's fur coats and, and everybody's food. nice though. Food folks and fun. They're sweet, they're sweet here. And I can tell you from experience, this for a dentist show has the best food. Now I don't know. I feel weird about celebrating and laughing with a 100-year uh, blood family feud. I don't know why that's a comedy, but you know the uh, Hatfield and McCoy's thing was violent. It, it was. It, it just ended like 17 years ago. Really? Yes. It, I just when you were talking to girls from Dollywood, I just saw it on the trivia up there. The the feud officially ended in 2003. So I guess we can celebrate that. How did it end? Everybody's um, dead, or just the oldest guy I, died, I or guess. Uh -huh, they, just started, they just started having girls. I guess they lost the name. They became the McGraths and the and the Chandlers or something. <laughs> This is a place, it's real zany. I choose to live here, I'm from the East Coast. You know, Big Luke was on, he's from Chicago. We choose to live here, there's a lot of opportunity. Every dream I ever wanted to achieve, I achieved in Tennessee. So, um, it, it's a place that's ripe with opportunity and beauty. You know, unlike the, the Dells, or unlike Grants, Missouri, you got this national park, it's the number one national park. It's unbelievable if you like hiking, ghost stories, checking out Indian reservations, gambling, whatever. You come here, and then you've got all this chintzy family fun stuff. You'll never want for go karts again. You'll never want for pancakes again. <laughs> and there's dinner shows. You will if it's after three o'clock. You're in the when you see all the pancake places. There's one on like every mile, and then they're like, oh, they're all closed. It's, well, that's true. That's my only gripe pan about this pancakes area. Pancakes close early, but like if you're here during the season, um, you can get in traffic jams at 2:30 in the morning still, depending on the year. It's crazy. So speaking of ghosts. Whoa! Spit take, right? You and Luke, who I devoured a burrito with late earlier, are the. Is that a euphemism? You're the. Yeah, we devoured each other's burritos. And actually, I gave him mine, he gave me his, and we just took, took as much I as we could. I knew it. I knew it this whole time. Yeah, his burrito is a lot bigger than mine, I think. It said they were both five pounds, but I think his <laughs> was bigger. Well, here it is. Here's the chicken. Let's put that right in the middle because we're all going to tackle it. 
chicken in a bucket. Not some red and white cardboard bucket either. This is some real chicken in a real bucket. Man. Wow. Are you like me in the sense that when there's a stage around, you want to be on it as opposed to looking at it? I can't go to shows. Exactly. I, can't, I can't see music. I, I, I can't go see bands. I, I have a hard time going to see plays. I always or wrestling shows or even stand-up comics. I cannot comics. go to a wrestling show. Yeah, that drives me nuts. But I definitely have a hard time. Because we want to be in that spot. It's like, what am I doing out here? I mean, that's a, I have no idea what they're even going to do. But I still want to be a part of it. The, <laughs> Maybe you don't. There's like a ten thousand dollar pig you gotta rest. <laughs> I'm good. Um, <laughs> As a city boy born and raised in South Detroit, Southern culture was always a mystery to me. And I know this is a dinner theater show with trained actors and performers, but it's as close as I've been to the real thing. This show is absolutely awesome. It's been a good time. Great friends, great food, a fun place to shoot this silly little show, and a new place I want to bring my kid. Stick all of this stuff on your list, because I am certainly coming back. So Vinny, this is a successful first mandate between the two of us. It was very successful. Yeah, leftover uh, chicken and corn and uh, what do you think of that show? It's good. We you ought to take out more off. I appreciate it. We're good. We got expensive taste though. I yeah, I know. What's your pin number, by the way? My pin number. Yeah, I just want to stick it, you know. That's what friends do. Mine's 2424. What's yours? I don't even remember at this point. I'm I'm greased out. I'm uh <laughs> So that was Gatlinburg, and that was Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I had the time of my life, and I'm stuffed. Literally, I've done 400 restaurants already, and I think this day has stuffed me more than I've ever been stuffed in my life. So, if you ever see a place like this, if you see it through me, don't live vicariously through me. Get off your couch, hop in your car, hop in an airplane, whatever it takes. Hatfields, McCoys, all the stuff that we did today. Don't wish it, go there. Eat that.